Welcome to Ditch Auto, my name's Jared, and today we're gonna to talk about using extension tubes with your camera and your lenses. Now, what extension tubes do is change, uh, what most people use them for, is enabling macro photography with the lenses that they already have. Now, most lenses have a minimum focus distance, uh, which means there's the a minimum amount of distance between you and your subject. Any closer and your lens is not going to be able to achieve focus on whatever that is. Uh, now, there are lenses that have extremely close uh, minimum focus distances, which are called macro lenses. And macro lenses are specialty lenses typically, um, which come in a variety of different lengths, but they can be expensive. There are some inexpensive macro lenses out there, but if you're not necessarily looking to add another lens to your camera bag, uh, these extension tubes are a great alternative. Now, these extension tubes here, uh, there's actually two of them, and I just have them put together. I ended up purchasing these for my Sony cameras early on because I had a couple of lenses that I really liked, but the minimum focus distance was not, I mean, it was very long. It was uh, a 7200 F4 lens that I had. And if I wanted to do anything detail, like zooming into 200 millimeters, I had to be quite a ways back from the, from the object that I was taking a picture of. And even then, I would end up having to crop way in on a photo, and it just didn't produce the image that I was looking for. Now, once I bought a macro lens, I was able to achieve more of the look that I was going for, but I still pull out these extension tubes every now and then and attach them between my lens and my camera body. So let's talk a little bit about what this does. Now, typically, we have our camera, we have our lens, and each lens, uh, regardless of its focal length, uh, whether it's a prime lens or a zoom lens, has a minimum focus distance. And that means that there is a set minimum distance between your lens and whatever it is that you're taking a picture of. And some lenses require you to be back further. Macro lenses allow you to get in really close. And so when we're taking pictures of things, we wanna be able to get in really close to whatever it is that we're taking pictures of. And some lenses allow us to do that, others do not. So these extension tubes, essentially what they do is they move the lens a little bit further away from the sensor uh, and allow for more of a minimum focus distance. Um, also what that does is it also decreases the depth of field. So say, for example, this lens right here is an f1.8, um, which at that wide aperture has a pretty shallow depth of field. Now with an extension tube on, it's gonna have even more of a shallow depth of field. So there's a couple of different things that you can achieve by uh, adding an extension tube in between your lenses. Um, like I said, the main thing is to allow you to get closer to whatever it is that you're taking pictures of to be, uh, be able to do macro photography without purchasing new lenses. Here is an example. This is a old man manual photography lens um, from a, uh, uh, an old camera and it has an adapter on it that also uh, is an extension tube. And so when I wanna go full manual and kind of have a retro look, I can use an older, uh, an older style um, basically lens and then this extension tube, which uh, is an adapter as well. It adapts this lens to my Sony. So sometimes you could find some cool things to do even with older lenses. Um, so with that said, what we have here is our extension tubes. These extension tubes actually do support autofocus if your lens supports autofocus. Um, some extension tubes don't. The really inexpensive extension tubes will not support autofocus, and which means you're gonna have to manual focus with your lens. So we're gonna talk about a couple different things here. Uh, the first, we're gonna look at how these work, and then we're gonna end this with a couple of tips on uh, manual focus for those of you that end up purchasing extension tubes that do not support autofocus. Um, so I have my little, my little boat over here, um, and this boat I did a review of in another channel, YouTube channel. I have a technology YouTube channel that I run as well, and um, so I did a review of this little RC boat. But nonetheless, we're gonna use it in this video. So what I have on my Sony here is a 55 millimeter 1.8 lens. It's a fairly standard purchase uh, for a lot of folks that are shooting with the, um, the Sony lenses. It's a kind of a midline level lens and it's a, a nice lens. 
So what we're gonna do here is power up the camera. I'm gonna get my settings pretty close to correct and then I'm gonna take a picture and we're gonna see how much closer we can get by adding in these extension tubes. So let's go ahead and just uh, change my settings here um, to what I would need them to be. And uh, here we go, we're getting pretty close. So right now I cannot achieve focus at this length. Uh, let me move my focal point. I'm gonna move back until, okay, there I'm able to focus not on the tip of the boat, but I'm able to focus on the logo. And so I'm gonna go ahead and let me just make a little bit of adjustment here again to my exposure, trying to get it right in camera. And there we go. All right, so I took that picture. You saw the, kind of the distance that I was at. Now I'm gonna take the extension tubes off here. I have both a 10 millimeter and a 18, I think, 16 millimeter. Different length extension tubes are available. Uh, I found that for DSLR cameras, you tend to have some really large extension tubes available. I know when I was shooting Canon, um, I had, uh, I think like a 32 or a 36 millimeter extension tube. Um, all right, so right here, I mean, it pulls me in a little bit closer because it's also, not only is it changing the minimum focal distance, but it's also changing the overall focal distance of the lens. So now my lens is not a 55 millimeter and it's not 55 millimeter true on this camera anyways because this is a crop sensor camera. A full sensor, a full size sensor camera would be uh, 55 millimeters. So this lens already is more than 55 millimeters, but now I have added 10 millimeters of additional to it. So it makes it now a 65 millimeter lens, uh, but on a crop sensor, it's gonna be even more. So let's hold the lens, uh, the camera up. Let's see how much closer we can get. I'm I'm getting pretty close. Oh, okay, there we've meet, we've, uh, there we go, we're right about here. So let's take a picture. All right, so already I'm able to get in significantly closer. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this off. And so now we'll go from the 10 to the 16. All right, here's about where we were. All right, we're in even closer. Up. Oh, there's about the limit. And there we go. All right, so and now for just the heck of it, let's go ahead and throw on the 10 onto the 16, essentially giving us 26 millimeters of additional focal length. Um, it's also decreasing our depth of field because I have not changed the aperture on the, uh, the lens at all. So we're still at an f2.5 aperture. So far we haven't. See, now I'm actually starting to have, oh, nope, there we are. The lens is having issues focusing on subjects far, far away. So as I move my camera back, I'm actually not able to achieve focus now because it's made this such a macro lens and it's pulled the lens so far away from the camera that the camera now is having a hard time using this lens naturally. So I'm not, with these extension tubes on here, not going to be able to use this lens uh, to take a picture of something far away anymore. That's something that's gonna happen uh, depending on the camera that you're using. Um, obviously these smaller cameras, uh, smaller body, smaller sensor and all this stuff may have some different results. Uh, so let's see what we can get here. Let's see how terribly close we can get. Cameras having some issues. In autofocus, it looks like that's about how close I'm able to get. I may be able to increase my exposure a little bit and let's, uh, I'm gonna go into manual focus on this and see if I can, let's see how close I can actually get. It looks like that was about, that was about it uh, in autofocus. So 
you introduce, sometimes introduce some challenges here when you start to extend the lens. Like keep in mind your lens is designed to work a certain way. And now we're changing the way that that lens was designed to work. So now it is no longer a lens that I could use to shoot something that's far away. I have now made this a macro lens, a macro lens that cannot take photos of things that are far away. So it adds functionality, but it also seems to take some functionality away. Uh, so as I mentioned, you know, these are autofocus, uh, which allow support for the autofocus of your lens to continue to work. Not all of them have this. The cheaper ones definitely do not. But if you spend a few more dollars, you can still maintain the autofocus of your camera lens um, while connected. So here's a couple of tips when you are going the route of not having autofocus. That means manual focus is going to be your option. The data that typically would come from your lens to your camera, such as which lens it is that writes that information to the data of the photo is not going to come through. Your camera is essentially not even going to know that it has a lens attached because there's no data coming through the extension tubes. And so because of that, uh, you'll have to set your camera to allow for photos uh, without a lens attached. It's sometimes uh, DSLR cameras you have an option to lock it up and not allow it to do anything unless a lens is attached. Um, and what that does is it protects your sensor because your sensor is exposed otherwise and it keeps the mirror down. And so you may have to uh, enable that in order for it to work. Now, manual focus tips. If you have a mirrorless camera, one of the cool things, and on some DSLR cameras, you have a focus magnification that happens when you, uh, when you're trying to focus on something manually, you can actually punch in on your camera and zoom in and pull focus. And then when you press the shutter button down just a little bit, it pulls back out and shows you what you're looking at. Manual focus is really challenging to achieve handheld, especially if you are shooting at a shutter speed of below one two hundredth of a second, because you're gonna have a little bit of your own shake here you're also gonna move in and out a little bit, which is gonna change your focus distance. So you're gonna to wanna to have a little bit faster of a shutter speed because that's gonna help minimize any movement uh, that may happen in, in you know, camera shake. But you're also gonna to wanna to have a more uh, depth, a longer depth of field if you're handheld, which means shooting maybe more at F8 or F10 or higher because that's going to give you a little bit of, uh, of give when you maybe move a little bit in and out. So the best way, of course, is to lock your camera down on a tripod, mount it on a tripod, make those little focus changes with your hand, and then use the shutter. Or maybe even set the timer to count down from two seconds. So you press the button, you're able to take your hands away from the camera, it counts down two seconds and then takes the picture. Um, and that minimizes you having your hands on the camera, which could make the camera move a little bit. It's the same types of tips that I would give somebody when you're shooting long exposure photography, except for the shutter speed. The shutter speed typically is very long, uh, but you lock down on a tripod, you try to limit touching the camera because of the, um, the shake or the movement that could mess up your focus or your exposure. So uh, one last tip just with, um, with shooting manual is that if you have a mirrorless camera, it's going to be a lot easier because uh, it has typically a zoom in feature. Like when I start to manipulate zoom here, the camera typically punches in uh, three to five times and allows me to get focus really easily. It also has focus peaking and some other tools that are typically video tools that it allows you to have to help uh, with the focus. And some cameras actually do have that when you're looking through the LCD screen on the back. You're able to punch in and zoom really close to something so that you can see if it's in focus. And then when you're ready, you just simply press down the shutter and it takes the picture the way that you composed it. So it's definitely a challenge when you start adding in these things. Um, maybe consider spending a couple extra dollars and getting the ones with autofocus. I've went ahead and linked below to uh, extension tubes for Sony, Nikon, and Canon, and then also linked to manual focus 
and, uh, and autofocus enabled extension tubes so that you can kind of see the options that are out there. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, if you're interested in a photography challenge, we have a photography challenge going on on our YouTube channel and our Facebook group. So make sure to check out the links to those and subscribe to our channel. If you like this video, we'll put out a lot more like it. And we hope to see you back here soon on Ditch Auto. Thanks a lot.